Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. So, those people who crack safes in the movies, full of rubbish. Full of rubbish, and I'll show you why. So, this is a safe lock at the moment, and it's been dialed up correctly, and it, when I turn the knob, it opens. Uh, what's missing at the front here is the actual dial, where it's, uh, you've got all the numbers, it turns left, turns right. It's not uncommon that somebody tries to attack a safe, and you're left with just this shaft. Now, there is dialers and things, machines that um, can actually you know dial it up if you've got the dial on there but if you've got nothing um, that's when it becomes a little bit tricky and you st it still can be done this notch along here can give you some reference if you've got that if not you'll have to kind of make your own references but um, let's look at what's involved in this safe lock because this is just a standard three wheel combination safe lock that's been out on the market for a long long time and it's still to date something quite reasonably hard to manipulate so if you're a locksmith um, well, in our training we had to manipulate them, and I couldn't manipulate it, but it would probably take me a couple of hours to, to get it open, or I could get lucky and get it open. So, to start off with here we have our bolt, so when the combination is correct, this arm will fall in and it will, you can rotate these wheels all together and it will pull the bolt back, just like so. So it's open at the moment, and it's locked, and it's this arm that's dropped in, allowing it to do it with this uh, this, this wheel at the back here. Okay, so now let's have a little, little look about the rest of it. So basically, I've seen so many movies where they do all these funny little things, and I've seen only probably one movie that actually got it right, and then I think that was The Panic Room, and um, I forget who was in it, but um, they actually did show on, um, you know, how to do it. But that's on a very simple safe. So I'm just going to take the arm off here, there's my screw there. Now this lock is pretty much useless, it's just for parts, so it's just for just for showing. So that spring there goes into a hole in the bolt, and that is how it creates that spring-loaded function where it can be dropped down there. And there's the drop-in arm right there, that's what we call the drop-in arm. That's the business end of, end of town. And what that does is that drops into this section right here. Now, I know that sounds very simple, but it's not. When all of these wheels are rotated in different uh, order, what happens is one wheel starts turning, then it does another revolution, then the other wheel starts turning, and then does another revolution, and then the other wheel starts turning. There is people out there who can actually manipulate these quite quick. There was one guy on YouTube there who actually manipulated a four-wheel bank vault, and um, he did it on Guinness World Records, and yeah, amazing. Wish I could uh, do that, but sadly I can't. So to actually line up all of those wheels, sometimes you can have them set to all one number as well. So that is kind of like cheating. So if you were to go through all the numbers, you could actually kind of find it if it's set to one number. That's why it's a good idea not to set them all to one number, set them to different different numbers so you get the maximum security out of the out of the lock as well. Now this little square drive up the back here, you might be able to see it. On the front of your safe, you might notice that you've got a little indicator at the 12 o'clock position, and you've got a little indicator at the 11 o'clock position. And to, to make, to change this particular type of lock, you would have to dial everything up to that indicator at the 11 o'clock position, open up the door, put a special tool in there, rotate it a quarter of a turn, which would then release the wheels. And I'll, I'll give you a look at the wheels, because they're, they're kind of funky too. So here's the wheels here, and uh, I'll just take one off. If I can, have we got a circlip on there? Yes, we do. Take that circlip off. So these wheels, they're just not solid bits of brass. There's a lot of uh, sort of engineering that goes into them. And I'll, I'll show you that. So just got to get this split circlip off. Come on off, come on. Okay, circlip off. First wheel, out. Okay, so we have uh, I guess you could call it a thrush washer, I think that's, or a, a washer, a friction washer. On the back we have a little notch here, so that when the first two wheels start turning it picks up the next wheel using that little notch there, being able to drive it around and around, and it also has a little one on the front there, it's like a little wedding ring, look at that. Will you marry me? Sergeant and Greenleaf, will you marry me? Okay, so inside here we have, uh, it's kind of like a sandwich, we've got a Two, two, two sheets, you could say, or part of the cover, and then you've got the center. Uh, there's a lot going on in there, and if you can see very carefully, there's actually little teeth, little teeth inside there. So what happens is that when we rotate this square right here, if I can do it with a little screwdriver, when we rotate this, ah, of course it's too small, isn't it? 
We're going to rotate it, don't worry. Bear with me. Ah, a JPEG, just what I need. And even that's not working. Uh, when we rotate it, the little teeth inside separate. The little teeth on this and the little teeth on this will separate, allowing you to then be able to turn it, rotate it back, and that will then lock this wheel into that position, which will then create that number. And when you look at it, it's actually a lot of engineering in this little part here. It's kind of like uh, watchmaking, you know, there's uh, little teeth going all the way around, a spring loaded um, section there. It's been, you know, you, you cut on the lathe to, to get the indentation, even these parts here. You know, this is all done by CNC these days, but if it was made by hand back in the olden days, you know, there would be, it'd be a job for a, you know, a watchmaker. I don't know too many locksmiths who would have the time to be able to complete something like this or, or uh, go in and make something like this. I mean, there is a few old guys who probably repaired and uh, made a lot of things like this. Okay, so that's wheel number one, wheel number two, and then wheel number three. Now these things, when they do play up, they're pretty much a disposable item because there's so much going on in there that it's not like you just pull out your hammer or just replace a part. There is certain parts we can get, but not not many. You know, if, if the little uh, key off the back here went missing or broken, we could replace that. We could replace this shaft, we could replace this, uh, this actual, uh, you know what, I've forgotten the name, name of it. Leave it down in the comments. This wheel here is it the it's the pickup wheel, uh, pickup lever. I can't remember at the moment. Also on the back of this wheel here, you'll also see it has L R R H sorry L H R H uh, V U and something there. So that's basically the direction. So if this lock was mounted vertically, you'd have to change it to the vertical. If it was right-handed or left-handed, you would change that little piece of brass there to the correct corresponding. Uh, position on this wheel which this key here would only go in one position so you'd rotate it and set it up that way. Another function about this lock which is really cool is this little trigger right here. So um, a lot of people think oh yeah we can just bash the back of the cover off or so and come in from the back but they've put this little safety in here and this is just one of the little safeties on a lot of the safes. This when the cover is removed this will basically lock into place with the bolt in the locked position. That means that if the you know if you try and attack this lock and remove the back cover it's going to deadlock on you and then you know you've not only got to defeat the wheels and then you've got to defeat this deadlocking mechanism here so that's just one of the securities that a lot of sort of these safes have another one that which i can tell you is um they put glass in front they put glass in front of this so if you try and drill a hole anywhere through you're going to hit the glass and as soon as you hit the glass it's going to have spring-loaded relockers just like this uh dead bolting or dog bolts or dead dead bolts that are basically just going to jam up the door even further so if you do try and um you know a lot of safes do have these extra sort of features to stop people manipulating them the bolt right here uh, has a little indentation uh fits into a sorry, marries up with a little ball bearing, a spring loader ball bearing, so as that slides into that position, it sort of clips in, so that doesn't kind of move anywhere. And that's um, just another little bit of engineering that's uh, gone in there. Uh, for lubrication, it's, it's just a bit of grease, and there's not much on this one here, but it's mainly you lubricate the actual bolt slide. The rest of it here is all dry, there's no real lubrication needed in there, so I wouldn't go spraying it full of WD or anything like that, it's not really necessary. It's all a, a precision, um, just put that back in there. It's a precision lock, and it doesn't take too kindly to uh, big blobs of, of uh, lubricant that might actually cause it to fail up, because if it doesn't slide or puts pressure on the bolt, it's something undesirable. But that's just a quick look at a safe lock, a three-wheel safe lock. Um, many manufacturers make them, SNG, uh, Ross, Lagarde, they all have di different variations of this. A lot of the time you can buy new locks now and they fit in the same footprint too. So if you didn't want the old uh, turn it left, turn it right, you could put a digital lock in and you'll find that the bodies are actually the same. So the body will go in the same spot and then you just put the digital keypad on, on the front. That's, they're a completely different kettle of fish, but looking back at this, and, and this was made, you know, uh, I don't know exactly, but we're talking 80, 90 years, I believe. This mechanism, this design was 80, 90 years old. I think it, you know, it's definitely, definitely a work of art when they made it. And even now, even though I can buy one cheaply from China uh, for under $100, I still think there's a lot of work that goes in there. There's a lot of engineering, and um, they still, they still give a lot of people a lot of um, resistance. Like if you're a pure safe cracker, you could walk up to this and probably crack it open in a few minutes. But most locksmiths out there are not going to be able to 
you know, no matter how long they've been on the job, if they haven't been doing it all day, every day, they probably wouldn't be able to get this open in the first hour. So, and then there are machines as well that can dial it up left and right. I have had some luck, um, you know, sitting there and going left, right, left, right, left, 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 right, left, right, and then eventually getting it. But that's kind of like, um, it's hit and miss. So it's always a bit fun. It's fun to do on a Saturday night uh, if you've got a few beers and uh, you want to just uh, sit there spinning it left and right, left and right, left and right. And it's a bit like Lotto. Maybe maybe one day you might actually drop in and you'll actually get it. But the brass and all this, because this is... Um, because this has now been, you know, basically defunct, it's not going on a safe. I would never put something that's been abused this badly back on a safe for the main reason of if it ever plays up, a safe is designed to keep you out and it's not going to allow you to get back to that lock and easily swap it out. So you, if you're going to put a safe lock on there, put the, you know, a brand new or 100%, you know, tested, thoroughly good lock. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a whole heap of problems. And also, test it with the door open three, four times before you lock it. Uh, just to make sure everything everything is in place. I've heard of many things happening on safes. I've heard of this little, um, this little, uh, how would you say, this little part right here that keeps these wheels together actually coming loose, meaning that two numbers work and then one number is actually a floating number that doesn't work. There's things along those lines that can happen where you've got a broken wheel and um, there are people out there who can, you know, sort those things out very quickly. I am not one of them. Um, I can you know, possibly find a way around it, but it's, you know, it's going to take me some time. So I just wanted to sort of show this, and uh, now that this has been pulled apart and it's also been smashed to bits, what I'll be doing with this is taking all these little bits of brass out, separating all these cogs, and um, probably putting them in some sort of resin in a piece of wood and making it look nice, because um, with all these holes and all this engineering, these things are pretty funky. You know, it's like a, an angry little Pac-Man. So I'll give, you a zo I'll give you a zoom in so you can appreciate uh, what we've kind of been talking about here. Let, let it focus up. All right, so there's your wheel there, and there's that little lunk that's connected there, and you might be able to see those little teeth there. You can see the teeth better on the side there, okay? And you can see the teeth there, and you can see the milling that's gone involved in here. Now, this, this, these are pins, brass pins, that are coming through connecting the case. So they're actually been, um, I guess, countersunk, uh, pressed, and then uh, flattened off on the top. And this part here is actually spring-loaded, so when that separates, then these gears separate as well. And if you look at it on the side there, so there's a lot of work that goes in this. I can really appreciate the the design. It's definitely a cool design. If 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 you had to come up with this from scratch, um, like you know, whoever did it was pretty cool back in the day. Now you know we have all sorts of CAD and uh, all sorts of things to see things. But I mean, if you had to make these little pieces by hand on the on the mill and the lathe and get them this this tight, I mean it can be done. You'd really need to have a passion for it to to want to do it a bit like a watchmaker so there's those wheels there and all those people that uh, sit around you know just drilling a hole here drilling a hole there to crack it is 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 just rubbish it's just rubbish and there's the final wheel down, down down the back there and there's that bolt so with these bolts too they do come in different sizes so you can, I'm wondering why it's not moving it's this this pin they do come in different sizes so you can actually get um, extended ones you can get ones that are tapped here as well uh, so yeah look on our lock shop if you're looking to make yourself a safe buy yourself a good a good lock and it'll certainly serve you well for many many years this type of lock here I could I would expect it to do 50 years you know 50 years no problems as long as you treat it nicely as long as you treat it nicely you're good to it and you buy it flowers every now and again I'm sure it'll definitely last all right so that's a three wheel safe lock I'm not sure who makes this one it could even be a cheap one leave your comments down below leave your stories down below have you had a few of these you've had to work on have you had some that took you five years to manipulate open um, have you had ones that people have attacked and then they call you and ask you to open it when you've got barely anything to work with leave your comments down below and once again thanks for watching